It is episode 69. Ooh, that number. And that's the year I was born. Talk a lot with James Live Jr. live from Inglewood, California, where there's fireworks going off and it's night and 4th of July. Um, we're going to talk about whatever, I guess, today. Um, it's Father's Day still for, for me for another two hours. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera around to talk a lot with you. But over there. And here I am. Hi, kids and kidlets. Father's Day evening. Had a nice day today. Um, didn't see my kids. But I talked to them. And um, heard from them. But it was, uh, it was a good day with other family today. I was, I was more of an uncle celebrated today. As a fa- uncle father. Uncle daddy. But I made it through today. I had pizza for the first time today in a year. So that's another story. Uh, I got all kind of, all kind of stuff going on, folks. James, all kind of stuff. Thank you. A father of 32 years. Yep. Grandfather of... How long I'm going to be grandfather? That's me. Age 51. Father and grandfather. Grandfather of three. Father of two. And they're all in Sacramento, which is 400 miles away. So I did not see them in person today. So I was a little sad about that. But I was taken care of today by other family members and people. And all you guys on here, on the social interwebs, have wished me Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. Uh, No, maybe with my kids, letting them pamper me. Um, But one day when the virus is over and everything is like semi-normal or whatever, we'll get together again. I get to see them. So, so, like I said, a little bittersweet to me. And I have no father that I can come to. So, it was kind of, this day is always a weird day for me. Um, so, I was like, yeah, okay. But it's almost over. But I actually had a good day today in spite of things. I had a good day in spite of circumstances. You got to make the, you got to take lemons and make a lemon drop. Uh, I had pizza for the first time in a year. So, what I did is, because I'm lactose intolerant. So what I did is I said, I'm going to try a really tiny, tiny. I, so I got went to Round Table and got a personal pizza, which is like, literally, it's like a slice of, it's like the size of one slice of pizza, basically. Um, and so I said, I'm going to try that and see what it does to my stomach. So my stomach hurts a little bit. I'm not crying on the toilet. I'm not crying on the toilet, thank God. Um, but I took an enzyme before and after I ate it. But it was just, it was small, but it was so good. I hadn't, it was like the best pizza in my entire life. Now, I know I've had better pizza in real life places. Shout out to Bleecker Street Pizza in New York City, in the West Village. Um, I've had better pizza. But it was because I had had pizza in a year and a half. It was good. You know what I mean? I like round table. So, I mean, it was fine. But I had pepperoni. I did really simple pepperoni pizza. And it was so small that I don't think it's, it didn't hurt my stomach. It's just, just a little bit. My stomach hurts a little bit. It's a little uneasy, but it's not, I'm not, again, I'm not crying on the toilet. So what does that mean? I have no idea. Um, can I eat pizza again? Maybe I can eat just one slice. Maybe that's what the deal is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is yet. I don't know. I don't know how to celebrate yet. But I did have pizza today. It tasted good. And it was just like, it was it was good. So I don't know. It was just good. So I, so I thought so I'd try it. So, because I'm running out of my lactose-free cheese. I'm re- I've been eating quesadillas like every morning. It was just so good. But I'm running out. I'm running out. It's going, it's going, it's going in my eye. I took a nice hot bath. And so, that was good. I took a nice hot bath. I lotioned up. It was good. Nice and relaxing. A bath is good to slow down. Makes you slow down. My eyes irritate. I, I always get I always get eyelashes in my eye. Cause I have long eyelashes. So I don't know what's going on. It's something irritated. So, but that was so I was in a nice hot bath. That was good. I'm watching a series called Love Victor. It's really good. I'm like, I'm, I'm already watched five. It's five out of ten episodes already. On Hulu, Hulu, Hulu. Who knew? So, yeah. So, it was a good day. So, I was with um, two of my favorite people, my sister and brother-in-law. 
And we went, we drove, we drove down the coast and went all the way down to San Pedro. Went on a bridge we've never been on before. That took us into Long Beach. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a nice day today. Some of it's in my story here. Um, but I said, let's get out the house because it was a nice day. And let's get out the house and go for a drive. And we hadn't done that in three months. So I feel comfortable with them in their car, in their car row. Um, but I'm venturing out a little bit. But I'm not going overboard. I'm not going to be going buck wild. I don't trust nobody. Cases are still going up in L.A. But I was like, I can go off. I was actually inside their house for the first time in three months. And that was interesting, too. So did that. And so I'm kind of just a little by little, just little things. But we're not going crazy because I don't know what's going on out there. So just little things like that. So like tomorrow, I'll be home tomorrow. Like tomorrow, I'll be home all day. I got interviews all day. I'll be home all day. Tuesday, I have to go to my mom's house. Wednesday, I'll be home. I have interviews all day. So, like, so I mean, so I'm like, I'm kind of, you know, working that out, working that out. So, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, we got fireworks going off right now. So, it's so annoying. It's so annoying. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. I'm worn out from riding the car. I haven't ridden the car that long in a long time either. It wore me out. Came home, took a little nap. I saw I had pizza, I had some wings. I had six. On at like the half for ten o'clock, and I forgot I did. I put on snooze, snooze. So yeah, so that's kind of crazy. I'm working on my network. I have a lot of changes happening on GLJ Media. I have a lot of different. I'm I'm organizing all the shows that I have, and shows that are coming. Oh, I'm just working the schedule, like what comes out Mondays, what comes out Tuesdays, what comes out Wednesdays, and I'm working with several people. And let, they let they let me know when they want their shows to come out. I'm like, you tell me when you, show, you tell me when your show to come out. And we'll put it out. And I test it. And if it's not a good day, then we'll like change it. But like, the one podcast I have right now, that's new. They're putting it out on Wednesdays. And so I, I got him press today, and we're going to we're filming a promo on Thursday. So we're going all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the bridge was really cool. Actually, it was a really cool bridge. I, we had never we never been we've seen it we've seen it before, but had never been on it. And so, I, I just, it's a whole different world down here in the South Bay Area. It's so different. I know it's not your show, but what's going on with Dishing Days? It's After Buzz TV. It's not Dishing Days. After Buzz TV has chosen to go dark. There's a lot of reasons why it's gone dark that I can't get into. Um, and, um, but that's, it's not Dishing Days. Dishing Days would love to be on right now. So it's not, it's not them. It's the network that's not filming right now. The, I, I, all I can tell you, because they made the announcement, the first two weeks it wasn't on, two weeks of it wasn't on because of Black Lives Matter. They decided to um, shut down the network in solidarity for their black hosts and to do a lot of black programming. So that's what they did for a couple of weeks. Other than that, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not at AfterBuzz TV anymore. I quit AfterBuzz TV on Sunday, last Sunday. A week ago. Yeah, a week ago. We go today. I quit AfterBuzz TV, so I'm not there anymore. So I will not know what's going on with them. I'll be finding out just like the rest of you guys what's happening. I mean, I have friends there and might tell me stuff, but I'm not part of AfterBuzz anymore. So after five years. So you can, I'll, I'll be finding out things just like you're finding them out. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the two weeks I know for sure. That's why there was no show. But trust me, I know for a fact, Dishing Days people wanted to come on. And it's been some restructuring of Dishing Days too, which they will... You will find out about also soon. Um, there's some cast stuff going on and everything, so you'll find out. You'll find out everything. Yes, they will come. They will. They will come back. And, they will come back. They, 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 you know, the show's not over. Over, um, but they will be back. But right now, it's not even their fault. It is the the network went dark. Like literally went dark <laughs> um, for dark reasons. No, um, so they're doing some stuff. I was privy to some of the stuff that's going on, but I just can't. I can't share it with you guys. You guys have to find out soon when it happens. But they miss you guys too. I know they do. They love doing the show. It's fun for them. Uh, it's Sunday tradition. It's the only soap that's left that's live. So they they do want to come back. But right. But it was Afterbus TV's decision to go dark. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, but yeah, I'm no longer at Acrobus TV, so I do not know the ins and outs of what's going to be happening there. From this day forward, I will not be knowing what's going on there. Only what people will share with me. I do have some inside folks there, so I'm sure I'll hear some stuff. But I don't, 
I probably won't be on the emails anymore or none of that stuff because I am done. I am now fully on my own, JLJ Media. That's what I'm doing. I know folks are asking me these questions about afterwards. I'm like, I'm not there anymore. Can't tell you. Don't know what's going on. So hopefully they get it, they'll get it together. But that's, that's the reason. But they will be back. They miss you guys. They will be back. It is Emmy week. My Emmy special is out now. People are, I'm getting so many great, so much, so much great feedback. Um, I'm very excited about that. Even my ISA coverage, getting a lot of feedback. And uh, so that's been great. We will be doing it with the same panel I did my show for the pre-show. We'll be doing a post-show this Saturday after the Emmys. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about our predictions, that we, if we were correct. How I'm very curious to see how they're going to do these Emmys. It's very interesting. I know a couple of things. I can't Again, I can't share them with you. I wish I could. I'll get in trouble. But I know a few things that are going to be happening. But, and, but in general, I have no idea how this is all going to come together. Um, so it's very, yes. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you watched it. We had a, we had a good We loved it. We had a great time. Lucretia and I and Jerry and Walker had a great time. And I apologize. I, love, I know Chandler Massey. I love Chandler Massey. I've held his Emmy, one of his Emmys. I'm sorry I almost forgot about him in the supporting actor category until Walker said something. I totally forgot. So I did catch it. I did catch myself after he said it and on the show. But I was like, because my paper cut off. It didn't have his name on it. I was like, dang it. And no. So, yes. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird Emmy week time because normally we'd be going here in L.A. We'd be going to different events, gifting suites. It's supposed to be three days of Emmys, you know, creative arts. So I, I would have been part of all of that this year for the first time since my Bell's palsy. I was going to return to the Emmy carpet under JLJ Media, of course, not under Atropos TV. Um, and none of that's happening. It's, it's so quiet here this week. Like This week is normally a big week for the Emmys in terms of stuff going on all the time. And there's nothing going on. It's very silent. You guys don't understand. Here in, in Los Angeles, Hollywood, it's just, it's been so silent here. It's a weird thing. We've, we've never done this before, so um, I don't know. You know. I'm going to ask you if you wanted to come on our show Friday. It's got the show. Friday's, well, Friday's, uh, Friday's going to be the Emmys itself. And so, no, I can't. I'll be, I have to save my stuff for the show that I'm producing on JLJ Media. <laughs> yeah, yes. Sorry, bitches. Can't do it. Thank you. My tux and Lucretia was dressed. We all got dressed up. So we did it for the show. We all got dressed up. So, yes. Um, but, yeah, sorry, folks. I do my own Emmy show. So, sorry, kids. Um, but, yeah, so I'm very excited. We had a great group. They all afterwards were like, we had so much fun. So it's going to be fun again. We have a good time again. So, But good luck to your show, So Party 411, on your Emmy coverage. I know you're doing yours right afterwards. So... I know, I know it'll be, I know it'll be good with you guys. You guys are gonna break it down. So dueling show, dueling Emmy shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but my, mine's video and audio, so it's a little different. Stephen Lemieux photo is in here. I Stephen Lemieux photo. Mm -hmm. It's my late night talk show. It's episode sixty nine, bitches. Sixty nine, sixty nine. I know it sounds dirty for my late night show. But I was born in nineteen sixty nine. That was the year I was born. So. What a good year it was. I was conceived in 68, but I was born in 69. So, the summer of love before that, and then I came into the world two months before um, the landing of the moon. My mother said that I was watching the moon landing as a baby with her. Of course, I don't remember anything. But she had me in my arm, in her arms, and they watched the moon landing on a tiny black and white television. <laughs> Ah, exactly. That's what they did there. So, yes, because we were poor back then. So, yes. Yeah, black and white TVs, folks. They had them back then. Yes. I remember we, I remember we got a color TV in the mid-70s. I, 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 I know I was in elementary school. I wasn't even living in Inglewood yet. And we got a, one of those console TVs. You know, the ones that it's basically furniture and the TV's built in. I remember that thing looking heavy. And I remember it was in our, it was in our living room. Oh my god! I just, I just remember that. I'm like, oh my god! I remember that. Um, I probably did come into the world saying, "I'm here, bitches." So, mother, so I came early. I was born early. So I mother said, "You came out. You were ready to come out." I guess apparently. I'm like, I don't know why. Why was I ready to come out? Um, so I probably, I probably came out dancing. I was, I was a hairy werewolf when I was born. That's what 
they told me. Um, yeah, console TV. We had one of those. Um, and then we had a second TV, which was black and white. And we had a breakfast nook. I used to love that house. This place called Longwood Avenue. I used to love it over there. We had this beautiful, beautiful duplex we lived in. I remember that as a kid. Huge wood floors, huge house. We had a breakfast nook. There was a little TV in there. So you could watch TV in the kitchen back then with the little rabbit ears. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh, I'm old, too. I'm, I'm old, too. That's one time I remember all that. Um, and then, um, then in the 80s, we had, we had, we had a, one of those, those click, those TVs that was, like, not, not the console. But we got a beta video machine. Not VHS, but beta. And beta was supposedly better than VHS, but it didn't last. And it loaded from the top. It was like a giant thing. We had to put the tape in and put it down. It was just all crazy. All crazy kids. Hey, all that all that technology, right, back then. No remote controls. We had to turn the channels with our hands. And back then, there were like four channels. There was like three network, PBS, and something else, and that was it. And channel, we had Channel 9 out here. Channel 9. You just watched Elvira Mr. the Dark on Saturdays. She had to play these cheesy old horror films. They were cheesy. Cheesy. It ain't easy being cheesy, is what I just always say. Um, and they're and they're fun. I love I love me some Elvira. She was a bomb. She was always kind of quirky and funny and silly, um, booby. Uh, she was great. So I don't guess had Elvira anywhere else. We had them in L.A. So, but she was on Channel Nine. So watch that. Uh, also, we used to watch the kung fu movies that were dubbed badly. The Bruce Lee movies. My father used to like those. And where their mouths moved and didn't match the dubbing. It's like that was crazy. We used to watch those on Saturdays. Of course, Soul Train. American Bandstand. For me, it's for all the fashion, for the dance. Mm-hmm. Attack of Kills is one of those. Yeah, that's one of those movies, yes. There's a lot of them. So, yeah, Elvira's bomb. She's still around. She looks great. Her name is Cassandra Peterson in real life. She's really great. I've never met her. I've never met her. I wish I, I, wish I could have met her. I mean, she's still around, but I wish I could meet her. I'd love to interview her. She'd be amazing. So, that's Apollo. That was later. That came out. That all came later. I'm talking. I'm, I'm, I'm talking late seventies, early eighties. You weren't even born yet. So this is all. This is all. I'm talking about that kind of stuff they had on. This is before public access. That didn't come till later. Her real name was Cassandra Peterson. Is her, her real name Elvira's real name? So and she's like looks so different in real life. Like she like this Holder in persona, but she seems so cool. But I just remember she had boobs in that black dress, that black wig, just like. You know, as a kid, it was like, oh, he, 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 you know. But she was always just kind of silly. She was like, she was like really non threatening, just kind of silly. And had fun. She made fun of herself and fun of she, what movie she would introduce. Um, kind of fun, you know, kind of like that. Um, but yeah, so those were um, really great. I know I've never met her. I know I've never met her. I, I've met so many. I mean, like in LA, there's we have certain people in LA that are like just icons before, you know, the Kardashians and all that shit. These are people who just like were personalities. Like we have Angeline. She's somebody who's been around since the 70s and 80s. And she was really big in the 80s. Where she always drank this pink car. She always wore pink. And I met her several times, actually. I know people who know her. And I've met her. And uh, she's, on, she's on a lot of billboards. She didn't really do anything. She just was Angeline. It's kind of like, she just kind of like, she was Angeline. Um, and so I met her. And she was nice. She was really nice. She was friendly. She was nice. I met her at a gay club once. She was like there doing something. And we all had drinks together. Like my friends knew who she was. We all had drinks together. It was a lot of fun. So I've met her. But there was like a few personalities that were just kind of out there. We had Richard Blade from K-Rock. I met him once. He was very nice. Uh, we had Rick Dees. Disco, disco duck, don't be a cluck. This disco duck, disco, disco, disco. Dis I have that forty five somewhere. He had enough. I because I, we knew him. I knew him from Kiss FM in the morning. He had this morning show that was hilarious. His cast of characters like Chewy from La Puente and um, John Revolting and all these characters. Him and his wife did all these characters, and so every morning I listened to him in the morning. And then all of a sudden, the song is like on the radio. It's literally on the radio stuff, and it's his. It was disco. It was uh, Rick Deason's "Cast of Idiots" or whatever, and they and they had, they had a number one. The song went number one. That's when disco was like bad, of course. It went number one. As I know that song was it was huge. It was actually really huge. Um, 
I'm like, disco, Doc. I'm like, oh my God. But I was a kid, like disco. So I, I have the 45 somewhere in my house. I have the 45. Mm hmm. It did. Don't be a cluck. Disco, 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 duck. <laughs> That's when disco, everybody was doing disco. Kiss the disco album. I was made for loving you, baby. You were made for loving me. And I was. That was a disco album. Um, Rolling Stones did disco. Of course, Rod Stewart went, If you want my body and you think I'm sexy, dumb. On. That was, he went disco. The, uh, he went blondie. <laughs> They found out, had a heart of glass. They all went disco. They all had a disco song. And I remember a lot of people got backlash because they were like, uh, you're rock and you went disco. I like all those songs. And I got Blondie did everything. I like Blondie, so I was like, don't get mess with my don't mess with my Deborah Harry, because I'm I'm all about Deborah Harry. So I was like, yeah, it was good. So it all went disco. But he was a local personality. We had we had him. Uh, there was Wolfman Jack. Some of you guys may not know who he is. Remember him. He had that radio voice, that raspy radio voice. And he would do some stuff on TV. And I remember, I, I never met him, but he was, he's been around. Um, we had a lot of different personalities that just were kind of, just were, you know, either from radio or whatever. They were just around and, you know, they did some TV and, you know. I always laugh I think of Byron Allen, who now is this huge multi-million dollar producer, mogul, network person. Uh, when he was on a show called Real People, he was a host. Uh, I used to watch them. So it's like, it's kind of, kind of funny how some, you never know when somebody's going to start. <laughs> you never know where they're going to start. So that was kind of, a, that was a lot of fun. You know, so the tide is high and I'm moving on. And I want to be your number one. I'm not the kind of girl who makes you. That's funny because see, Blondie did all kinds of music. It's kind of funny. They were punk new wave, but they that, that was very uh, Caribbean reggae-ish. And then, then they, of course, they did um, Five Five Phrases. And everybody's driving and it's in the sand. My mind flashes flash. Flash is cool. Flash is wonderful. I'm not shade on you. They did Rapture, the first rap song that went number one. Um, I have all those albums. They, I, I was a huge Blondie fan. But they did, they did a lot. Of, they did so many great songs, but they did so many different genres of music. You know, he's eating cars, he's eating bars, and now he only eats guitars. Get up. <laughs> that was the first rap song to go number one by Blondie. Mm-hmm. No special drink tonight. I had mimosas for lunch and brunch, but so today I'm just having lemonade. Um, so yeah. So anyway, so there's a lot of we just had a lot of people in our in LA that just kind of were personalities that's kind of you saw them on things. Like, there was no social media back then, obviously. Um, so, yeah, have some fond memories. I do. I mean, I mean, my childhood was kind of fucked up, but then there were parts of it that when I wasn't with my parents or whatever it was great. <laughs> I had, I had like other parts of my life as a kid. There were some fun moments: be skating on Venice Beach, eating waffle ice cream cones. You know, in the seventies. Listening to disco music. I loved it. And being out all day. Like, it's like, when it, come back when it gets dark. Come to this certain spot and we'll pick you up when it's dark. They give us like 20 bucks and go and stuff. And then I remember the early 80s uh, when video games first came out to actual, like, arcades. They added video games. It was so much fun. I used to go to a place called Westworld in Westwood, California. It was by UCLA. And they had like 25 cent games or 10 cent games. I used to play... Centipede and Millipede and Ms. Pac-Man and Galaga and Space Invaders and Frogger and Donkey Kong. Um, I used to play all those. God, I used to play all those games. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. We ride the bus up there and go. It was, it was the because it was the this was the early. This was like the mid '80s, like early to mid '80s. Yeah, Whaler, Madam, and Flowers, of course. Some of them. Well, you know, I, you know, I know solid, solid gold. Da, 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 da. You know, I was all about. I know Darcel, the lead dancer from Solid Gold, and you know, Dion Warwick, Marilyn McCoo, Barry. G I mean, I, I, Solid Gold was my show every week. The Countdown. Who are you kidding? The Countdown. That was my show. Mm hmm. We used to watch that and Star Search, early Star Search. My friend Jason Stewart, I was doing I was doing some stuff on him before I did a show with him. 
And I found the clip in 87 where he went against Martin Lawrence on Star Search. Martin Lawrence won, of course. Um, but we're like, I'm like, you went up against Martin Lawrence. That is so funny. Martin Lawrence was on Star Search. I just remember how big Star Search was. That was the way, that was our American Idol stuff. That was our America's Got Talent. It was like, that was the place to go. And Dance Fever was a dance competition show. I, I remember watching that. I mean, I used to love Dan, Danny Terrio, who taught John Travolta how to dance at Sanai Fever. That's why they had Dance Fever. And that was late 70s. I remember, I remember being in my grandmother's house to watch all these shows. Most, a lot of my summers were spent um, back and forth. I'd be either in New York with those grandparents or in L.A. with my grandmother a lot. She lived 10 blocks away from us. So me and my cousins were always over there, and we'd watch TV. And there's there a lot of things we'd watch. You know, we watched Three's Company and, and Charlie's Angels, all these things. And they didn't let, they let us watch anything because it was, it was in the limit. They were outside. We, we'd be outside playing all day and at night. We'd come in. She, they'd feed us. And we sometimes we spend a night over there sometimes and stuff. But all those shows, I, I loved how to dance all those shows. I used to love all those shows. Oh, please. Me and my cousin Bobby were always learning the latest dance. I was, we always we called ourselves the Disco Babies. And we would learn every, the cowboy, the freak, the worm, the hustle. Um, I'm looking at a couple others. Um, oh, my God. There's a couple others. But we, we learned all those dance steps. The bump. Uh, we do all the dance steps. And we would just, like, learn them. And I just, I, like I said, I'd watch Soul Train. And I was like, well, I watched Soul Train American Bandstand. I watched both. Um, you know, so. Did you like the Young Norris version of Love Boat? It was fine. I mean, the song, I mean, it's fine. I, I, have, I have nothing for or against it. I love Dionne Warwick, so that's, you know, I like her voice is so effortless. But it's fine. I just like the love boat. Soon we'll be making another run. The love boat. Yeah, I just, I just like the song itself. But her version was fine. Um, but I like, I, like version of, of, I like her version of Solid Gold theme. Because she would hold that note at the end. Oh, Solid Gold. She was good. So I like the, the version of Solid Gold. That's a good one. I like the Solid Gold. I, I love me some Dionne Warwick. I mean, I'm all about, do you, you know the way to San Jose? I'm going to get to find some peace of mind in San Jose. L.A. is a great big freeway. Put a hundred down and buy a car. In a week, maybe two, they'll make you a star. That was going also. Walk on by. Walk on by, make me leave, and you don't see my... I said I, I mentioned Wolfman Jack before he came on, Iron Beard. I just did. I actually mentioned... I mentioned... We're talking about Elvira. I mentioned Wolfman Jack. I mentioned Rick Dees, Richard Blade. I just mentioned all those people. I never, th I never thought about the, the theme. See, I never even thought about the theme that strong enough to even know there was a debate for it. You met her at Hughes Haircraft? Well, go on, girl. I didn't know that. Dion Warwick, what's it all about, Alfie? I say a little prayer for you forever and ever, and there we are, and I still love you forever. She was such a good singer. I loved, I loved, I loved her. I loved her. I'm not going to talk about. I'm not talking about Love Boat on here. I'm not going that direction. You guys, you guys can try. I'm not going that direction. I'm so excited. That's very cool. I never met. I never met Dion Warwick either. Yeah, no, I never got to meet us. I'm very, I'm very envious. So I like her. I like her. So I'm like, I'm steering the conversation in another direction. Um, this is my show, of course. Uh, but no, I, I think I just love that there were the, all these shows were all harmless. Everything was harmless for the most part. They're harmless shows, and um, I watched actually, folks, a really great documentary on Netflix called Disclosure. And it's about trans representation in television and movies. And I, my, I saw my brother this earlier today. I was really, my eyes were opened up to the portrayals of people, men in dresses, so to speak, and women in male drag. It was very interesting. And they brought up shows like Bosom Buddies. I don't know if anybody remembers that show. That was Tom Hanks' first start. Uh, we dressed as women to live in his apartment building. They mentioned um, Soap, of course, Billy Crystal, his whole character. Um, I mean, it's, it's just interesting what they brought. I mean, they brought up Picket Fences. I mean, all these shows, I'm like, oh, yeah. They showed ER and Chicago Hope and all these shows where they had a trans storyline. 
it was very interesting. It was, I was like, I, I never even picked up on a lot of stuff. Last I never thought so. It's just very interesting. Yeah, disclosure is good. It's it's a good documentary. But you'll see. They even mentioned Ace Ventura Peck Detective. Wait till you see what they talk about in this movie. How offensive it is to trans people. I never. It's Jim Carrey, of course. He's offensive to everybody, right? Never even thought about it. It's it's really good. It's just it's, it's a good history on just TV and movies. Also, you see stuff and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that show. Oh, I remember that show. It's very interesting. Um. Yeah, so just yeah, so it's, it's great. It's, so it's a good one, but just reminds me of all these shows I totally forgot about. There is so much television that we don't talk about, so much we do, that shows we forget about. Like I still love Eight Is Enough because they were in Sacramento. It was a big family, uh, Dick Van Patten, uh, Betty Buckley, and all that. I, I remember, I remember that. It's just like wow, I forgot about, I forgot about this show, and I didn't work at the Sacramento B. Went to the Sacramento Chronicle, I think it was. And I, and I used to go visit Sacramento when that show was on. Um, but it's like a million... Like, I was singing the other day to my brother. Here we are, face to face, a couple of silver spoons. And he was like, oh my God, I haven't talked about that show in a long time. I go, I know. Alfonso Ribeiro and Ricky Schroeder. I haven't about the show in ages. You know, or I, used to lo- or I used to love Quantum Leap. When Scott Bakula would... At the end of every episode, he would transfer to another time period, and it would show you the time period at the end of the episode. Like all of a sudden, you'd be like in disco. And there's one he was in a white suit in disco, and it ended. So you had to watch next week to see what happened, or what he like transported to back in time, and there were guns pointed at him, and it ended. And you had to watch next. Like it was a very clever premise, very clever premise. Um, so I totally, I, I totally love that. I think it's, it's such an interesting. An interesting thing. So it's, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just funny. There's a lot of shows we just don't talk about. They just, they just somehow, so my, 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 my brother and I was saying how, it's funny how some things are passed down generations and some things aren't passed down. Like, for example, everyone knows the Beatles. We just all, we all know the Beatles. For somehow, they were always passed down. But there are other groups that just don't get passed down, or certain movies, they get passed. You know, like like a Color Purple or Steel Magnolias or Turns of Endearment. Like these movies, somehow the kids people know what they are. They get passed down, while other movies just don't. And certain TV shows get passed down. That, like I said, we, we're still talking about Dallas. We're still we're still about Dynasty, but no one talks about Falcon Crest really. No one's talking about it. So it's like, why isn't that one talking? No one's talking about Flamingo Road or any of these shows that came out. They don't. They're not talking about it. So it's really interesting how certain shows and certain movies and certain they like Star Wars gets passed down, obviously, because because it's whatever. I remember a show back in the seventies, uh, Buck Rogers in Twenty Fifth Century, and no one mentions that. Battlestar Galactica got passed on, and then it made a newer version that wasn't like the old version, of course. But it's like that got passed on. You know, Star Trek got passed, kept kept getting passed on. You know, but it's like some of these other shows, they just don't, they don't get passed on down to they just, they just don't. And I think part of, it, of course, is like reruns. It's like the Brady Butts gets passed down, Gilligan's Island got passed down. I have Lucy got passed down. But the Partridge Family is not passed down that much, really. I think some people know it, but not, it's not passed down like the. And it came out the same. It was it was on right after Brady Bunch. So like it didn't get it just didn't get it just didn't get you know people know it kind of but it didn't get passed down. Hello James Maple, James Maple, you guys, very talented host and activist in the room, folks. Make him feel welcome. It's my late night talk show. Talk a lot with James Lott Jr. We're a family here. We talk here every night. My late night IG show is what I do for the masses. For the masses, um, he's a talented guy. He's out there doing stuff. It's been suggested we do a song together on Roxy's show. So I'm like, I mean, don't give me a challenge. You know, I write music every day. I might have to send James Maple um, uh, some beats and some lyrics and see if he can do something. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's, there's certain shows that just didn't get passed down. Cagney and Lacey didn't get passed down. That was a huge hit. And that didn't get passed down. My show. It's like, I was thinking about like the Hughleys. I was thinking about um, my wife and kids. They were all black. Bernie Mac. There were black shows that didn't get passed down. 
Yet, like, Living Single got passed down. Like, you know, even Girlfriends got passed down on some level. Like, certain, certain people just don't, certain shows just don't get passed down. Martin got passed down. Fresh Prince got passed down. Like, those got passed down, but other ones just don't. It's like, we, we like, which, you know, I guess, I'm trying to think, did a different, like, because Coffee Show, of course, was huge, and that became something. But so was a different world, but did a different world get back? What's happening? That was my show. I love me some hey, 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 uh, with, uh, with uh, Rerun and all that. Did that get passed down? I don't think it got passed down. I don't think anybody knows what What's Happening is. I used to love, that show was huge. I used to love What's Happening. With Raj, Dwayne, and Rerun, that was my show. They didn't get passed down. But, like, Jefferson's got passed down. Yeah, they got, they got passed down. Yeah, I guess he got passed down. What's Happening was the bomb. I used to love that show so much. And D, ooh, you're in trouble. She was always saying it all the time. Like I said, Living Single got passed down. Those shows were good, and they were hits. But they didn't get passed down to, like, the next generation. So I just wonder if it, did they, they just die out. Oh, Okay, Chase Maple. So now you said you said okay. I'm I ask anybody else on here. I will send I will send some shit to you, and you'll be I'll be like okay, get back to me. Mm-hmm. I will. Okay, I think I'll put something together. Let's see, let's see what you can do. I'm pro, pro prolific writer and music person. Um, I love collaborations. I love doing collaborations. Um, and uh, I just finished doing the soundtrack that I'm scoring, so I can I have time for other music now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I just I think it's just really interesting that um, especially with black shows, I know I know a lot of times if they're if they're in reruns or they're if they're found somewhere, they they get passed down each generation. But I guess the ones that don't go into syndication, I guess they don't get it. Because I remember my wife and kids was a hit. The Hughleys was a hit. They were hits. They were on network. They were hits. But for some reason they just they're not really. Fanny Matters got passed down because of Urkel. I think that's why he got passed down. Uh, yeah, I think that's why. But Perfect Strangers. You know what's talking about that show? Perfect Strangers. Family Matters is the spinoff of Perfect Strangers. You don't, you don't, hear, you don't hear about it anywhere. You don't hear about it at all. Full House got passed down and made Fuller House. You know, so it's like certain things. It's kind of, you know, certain things, you know, got rebooted. Certain things. That's so Raven. Life just got syndicated, and Young Jason and myself watched them again. That's I think it's what it, I think it's what it is. I think that's I think no, that's a good point. Nick at night, Nick at night, BT. Where else? And then BT turned like they have they have like um, TV One or whatever. But I, no, that's a good point. So like Nick at night, BT. Um, if a networks play it late at night. I guess they I guess they would repeat them. So that's that that makes TV Land another one good, right? TV Land. So I guess if they show them now, then they get passed down. Yeah, give me a break. They get passed. I just love give me a break. They get passed down. So neither the Growing Pains they get passed down. Uh, Boomerang for cartoons. So I didn't know that. So you guys are younger than I am. So Boomerang has a lot of the older cartoons. I don't know much. I don't know. I don't know. I know. I know of Boomerang, but I don't know it. You guys in here are all younger than me. You probably know what it is. Um, that's another thing, too, cartoons. Because, I like, for me, because there's also, there's the cartoon cartoons, and there's, like, the adult cartoons. I mean, I'm not meaning, like, X-rated, but, like, the ones for adults. Like, I was a huge Beavis and Butthead fan. I know. Ren and Stimpy. Daria. Daria was my girl. I loved me some Daria. And I think some of those got passed down, right? I don't know if some of those did or not. I can't tell if you guys know those. Or not, because I those were those were they were huge. Oh yeah, and Up TV, Up TV is another one too. Up TV. Um, so I don't know which cartoons. I know like some of the ones like you know, I don't, see, I don't know if you guys got Thundercats or anything. I mean that stuff came out when I was younger, but I don't think I, I don't know if they got passed down or not. I'd have to know from you guys. Yeah, Nick and Knight used to do the black and white sitcoms. Yes, MTV would later on. Oh okay, so MTV would do a late night run of those shows. Okay. Very odd parents, yeah. So I, I no, I, yeah, I didn't. I just, I don't know. I was like, okay, yeah, those were all, those were all my time period. I used to love those in the nineties, eighties, and nineties. They were fun. Um, I used to crack my beavers and butthead all the time. But Daria was my girl. She was so just like so dour. She was like great. Um, beginning in Cartoon Network was Flintstones, Jetsons. Yeah, those all got passed down, generation to generation. Those all got passed down. I used to love the Jetsons. 
I wanted I wanted to be in the, I wanted to be in the Jetsons. You know, I like flying or nothing, but I wanted to be in the Jetsons. I was like, I'm gonna be a Jetsons. Oh yeah, and Quinn, yep, that's right. Oh, you guys do now, you do now. Oh my god, I loved Daria. That was my wife. I loved her. She was so good. Yeah, Thundercats. Yeah, I heard Daria's coming back. We're talking old shows, Tony Moore. Tony Moore, Tony Moore, Tony Moore, more, more. Old TV shows. And like which ones got passed down and which ones didn't. Like certain shows, certain shows kind of get, you know. But you're right, Nick and Knight. I do remember Nick and Knight show all the shows. That's right, they did. Um, they did reach back. But see, I knew when I was a kid, because um, we just had, we had three channels. Um, they were just show them. They were just show them on the weekends, or I show them late at night. They were show them. Yeah, the Transformers. Yeah, that was another one. Shira, He Man. Those were all ones when I was, you know. Yes, on stone tablets. That's right. We had we had stone tablets and hang and wire hangers. That's how I watched television. They were all good. They were good. But you know, there's it was silly humor. You know, it was silly humor. I was I was a boy. It was silly humor, and you know, I probably they probably wouldn't find them funny now. Uh, but I'm just like, but they were they were funny back then. I guess I, I used to like um, Laverne and Shirley. Five, six, seven, eight, Samil, Samazo, House of Rep Incorporated. We're going to do it. Give us any chance, you'll take it. Give us any rule, you'll break it. Whatever I say, you know, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, there you have the facts of life. I always say that. I, I, just, I just can't, I just can't help. I said the other day, you don't take the good, you take the bad, take them both, you have the facts of life. Milk and Coca Cola. Milk, I know, that sounds so gross. Milk and I tried it once and I was like, Oh, no, thank you. I will not. Oh, that was grody. But I love Laverne Shirley. If you guys understand when Laverne Shirley came out, I was I was obviously alive when it came out. It became the number one show in the country. It was huge. It overtook Happy Days, and it's literally a spinoff of Happy Days. It was huge. The show was huge. It was everywhere. We were all talking about it. I loved I loved Laverne Shirley. That was the show. And Mark and Mindy, another spinoff of um, Family. That's why I used to do spinoffs all the time of, of that. It was a good tea with Robin Williams. I, I met Robin Williams back in the 90s. I was working at, he used to live in San Francisco. Um, I ran a store called Headlines in the Castro. And he came and he needed somebody to shop. And because he was famous, they had the man, I was the manager. I got to shop with him, be his personal shopper. We closed the store down. He was a very quiet guy. Like he was very, he was very, Humble and he was very hairy too. I think mean, he was very hairy and shorter than I was. And he was very quiet, but he was very polite. And we laughed a couple of times. I showed up, he bought some stuff. We had some knickknacky stuff. We bought it. And I just I remember telling him, um, I really enjoy your work. You're you know, you're hilarious. I saw your show live at the Met and I I laughed, I laughed till I cried. And I said, I just think it's really I think you're very super uber talented. And he was like, Thank you, and you know, I appreciate that. And and he bought like maybe at the time something of the this was like this was like the mid nineties, so I think I think his total came to like five hundred dollars for the stuff we bought. We we were we were like a knickknacky store kind of stuff, and he bought it and I and he shook my hand a nice handshake, and he said thank you James so much for your help I appreciate it, and I said thank you Robin and then he left and so when he died I was in Canada when I found he died, um, when he they committed suicide I felt so heartbroken just because I was thinking wow. Off, off screen, he was a quiet, just like humble guy. And he used to walk around San Francisco all the time. And a lot of people who knew him, just from around San Francisco, and he was just not, he was unassuming, which was so funny. He was a true definition of get on stage and the performance comes out. Um, and, but off, he was just so, just like down to earth. So I have my Robin Williams story. And so I was very happy about that. And so, Three's Company. I'm sorry. I was all about. I was all about Suzanne Summers. All about Chrissy. That was my girl. Mm -hmm. And then my friend got on there. Jenny Harrison played her. Played her. Uh, her sister. Three days, my mini. All those. Yeah, all those. Three's company was a bomb because it was here in L.A. I mean, it was like Venice Beach, and I used to go to Venice Beach all the time. And that show was huge too. We used to watch it at my grandmother's house. It was huge. But we would be looking forward to to see the, the well. Now I, now I know it's called B roll. Now back then you know what it was. When they would show them walking down the strip and all that stuff. I know where that is. I know where that is. Um, but obviously filmed on a soundstage. But it was just kind of like, oh, okay. But I used to love Three's Company. Again, I mean, 
again, rest in peace, John Ritter. I mean, another person who was amazing. His slapstick timing was amazing on that show. Was amazing. Was amazing. And it just it was just like it was so he was he was very I mean, he's very much missed. He was such a good actor. He was a good dramatic actor too. He had a show called Hooperman, which was a like dramedy, as Candace would call it. Um it was really I thought it was really good. He was really good in that. He was good in a lot of different things. And of course the eight simple rules, the they, my daughter was good and John Ritter was really a good, good, good actor. He was so good. It was just it was just crazy. So I feel I just I so I'm sad that he I'm sad that he's gone too. I'm sad he's gone too. Because he was that the three of them, him, Suzanne Summers, and um and Joyce DeWitt were amazing. And I'm gonna show you guys something. Let me show you guys a lot. It's, it's time for show and tell portion of James Lott Jr.'s Talk A Lot show. You're not gonna believe this. So a friend of mine thought they were being funny. Wait till I show, wait till I show you this, guys. You're gonna, you're gonna die. As we're talking about Three's Company. Okay. So one of my friends went and saw, oh, what's in here? Oh, Joyce DeWitt at a concert thing she did. Let me turn on the light. My friend gave me a glass. That's Joyce DeWitt. Let me, let me take this thing out of here. Let me, take all this, let me take all this shit out of here. That's Joyce DeWitt. She did a show. That's actually her. She did same time next year. And I, I actually have a glass, a Joyce DeWitt glass. Why do I can't why have I kept it? Because it's so unique. I'm keeping it. Let's just take a picture of it. It's Joyce DeWitt. I I don't even know. I'm, so I'm gonna take a picture of it. I think I'll I think I'll post this because it's like, what the and I got this little African figure. I forgot I had this little African figure. I should put her somewhere. I don't know. And I have a thing that says hope. I don't know. So yes, I'll take my Joyce D. Wick glass and I'm gonna take a picture of it somewhere. So I'll put that over here. I know. James Lott Jr. has something that random. I know. Crazy. So yeah. That's your I have everything. She just she got she's out of the limelight. She did a show with Suzanne Summers years later. Like maybe five, ten years ago on Suzanne's summer show. You know Suzanne's everywhere. She's rich. She's a rich bitch. She's making she's making the money. Um, and so uh, they actually reunited and they made up. It was after John Ritter died. Cause Suzanne was the star of the show, folks. Her and John Ritter were a star. And all Suzanne wanted was equal pay. And back then in the seventies were like, no bitch. Bye. Yeah, same time next year was an Alan Alda, I think, movie. I think he did the movie. You're actually, you are correct. So, yes, I have a Joyce DeWitt glass. <laughs> like, what? The Thighmaster, that's what made her famous and rich. And Suzanne's, like, talking about having sex five times a day with her husband. And, and she's, like, taking pictures 70-something years old in a field of, like, lilies or some shit like that. I was like, you go, girl. I'm 51, and I'm not taking no pictures of no field of lilies naked. You're not, you're not going to see all this. Down. You're not going to see nothing below this. It's not going to be happening. I don't do horror films. That's not happening. I'm like, uh, nobody wants to see that in an Instagram post. But she looked amazing. I was like, you go, bitch. Go out there, and you do it, girl. You do it. She has an empire. Not just a few products. She got an empire of, of stuff. And I'm like, that's where James Lott Jr. is going that direction. She was going that. I'm going that direction. I'm building my empire. Mm-hmm. So she made, but she did. Woo! See, her and Jane Fonda came out the right time. They just, they just, they just, it, like Jane Fonda said it, and she goes, it was pure luck that she did a videotape. One videotape changed her whole life. And Jane Fonda was an Academy Award winning actress from the eight, from the 70s, and was literally just getting, going into her 80s, you know, going into her 40s and the 80s and everything. And that changed every... I remember how aerobics were so... Big. My mom used to take an aerobics class over here at Marina Del Rey. So you'd go at 6 in the morning, and, and she'd have her leg warmers and stuff, and be like, five, six, seven, eight, nee, 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 you know, all that stuff, and whatever. And I'm like, aerobics. Jazzercise, dance aerobics. I remember, I remember all that stuff. I never got into it. I'm like, that was a little too much for me. Uh, but I had friends who'd go, we'd go five times a week, four times a week, and that tape... Let me show you something. <laughs> Let's follow James Lott Jr. one more time for a show and tell. So, 
I bought a karaoke machine. This is how random my, my fucking life is. This is how random it is. Let's turn on, let's turn, let's turn on, let's turn on the ring light so you can see over here. So I, this is my keyboard. Oh, I said that should do this way. This is my keyboard where I make music. And I move it. Count the way. One second, kids. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I bought this. For like 20 bucks. This is this is an actual, they call it an electronic singing system, but it's a karaoke machine from the 80s. What's the tape that came with it? Jane Fonda's Primetime Workout. That's what came with it from 19. Look at that, 84. That's what came with this karaoke machine. But I'm like, I'm not gonna sing with the music, I'm gonna work out. I looked this up on the internet recently. This thing in good condition is worth like $500. I was like, okay. Sure. But it came with a Jane Fonda tape. That's how random that is. So, oops. I'll move, I'll move all this stuff later. As long as I'm in the way. Designing room, of course. We have Meshach Taylor. May he, may he rest in peace. Dixie Carter. May she rest in peace. That was, that was a good show, too. You were, too. Thanks for telling me how old you were back then. Thank you so much. I really appreciate knowing how old you were in 1984. I was 15 years old. In 1984, I got my first job. That's what happened. My first job in 1984. I've been working 36 years of my life. 36 years. And I'm tired. You know, A-time. Mm-hmm. Shady Sunday, I see. Shady Sunday. But I do still look good, 51. This is 51, you guys. Hardly any wrinkles. Got a few up here because I worry all the time because people, people make me worry. Dixie's gone, too. But I look pretty good. You know black don't crack, so you know that. But I was a little scared because I, you know, I got white blood in me. And so I was a little scared because my father looks old. And I was like, ooh, but I look pretty good. I'm holding in there. I'm holding it down. I'm holding it down. I shaved the gray off, but I keep the gray here because I earned it. I don't care. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it's good. Well, happy Monday to you guys on Monday. It don't. I've seen a few blacks that crack. I have seen a few. <laughs> um, but for the most part, we all look pretty good. You know, the insides may fall apart, but the outside... You, know, you were in San Jose in 84? Oh, I thought you were in San Jose. Okay. Do you know anybody in San Jose? L.A. is a great big freeway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I'll take all of the compliments. I'll take them all. Should I go into better light so you can see more of my young-looking face? There we go. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just have to shave more of this down because I don't want the gray right there. But I don't mind the gray in here. I'm keeping that. I have no problem. It makes me look distinguished. Or some shit like that, right? That's what, they, that's what they say. That's what they say. I don't know what that means, but that's what they say. But my 51-year-old ass is not slowing down. I do 10,000 different things, I know. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to show people that age. That age is a number. But working hard doesn't matter. I'm going to show them that I... I've been doing this for 13 years. I've been doing the entertainment thing. So I'm, gonna keep, I'm keeping it going, folks. Worked hard for what I've gotten in this business. Trust me. Not easy. This business is not set up for you to make it. It's not set up for you to make it. It's set up for you to go over hurdles. So I do. I've earned every thing that I've gotten, which is a good feeling, folks. It's a good feeling. Age ain't nothing but a number. Age ain't nothing but a friend. I just love her, too. There was a show called James at 15. His name was Lance. I forgot his last name. And so that's why I started my hashtags. We noticed last couple of years, I've been doing James at 49. I did James at 50 last year. I've been doing James at 51. I got that from the James at 15 series. A little side note thing. Exactly. Cur Lance Kerwin. That's right, Lance Kerwin. I, so, yeah. So I, um, but I really do. I mean, when I won my award last year, I said this is for the old guys. I mean, I really do feel like they want to throw us aside as you get a certain age. They're like, they're like, okay, you're over 30, you're done. You're over 40, you're done. No! 
I got more to say. I got more to do. I'm not done. I got more shit to say. They're gonna let me gonna put me in the path, put me to pasture, put me hanging out to dry. I got stuff, I got stuff to do. My empire is 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 built, but I got more to add to it. I say as long as you can wheel me in and I can still talk, I can do this to, I can do this to I can do this to the day I die. I was like, I can do this. Andy Rooney did it till he was like, she loves my girlfriend's show. Thank you. I'm getting lots of attention from my girlfriend's show. It's so weird. I'm like, people said I should do it. So I'm doing the app. So I'm doing it. And people are actually listening and watching it. I'm like, I've got some good feedback. And I told you I got some of the stars of the show. I'm in talks with them to be on the girlfriend's after show. So just stay tuned. I have one person. You guys are going to shit in your pants. You're going to shit in your pants. When I bring this person on the show, oh my god, we're in talks right now. I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna talk to this person tomorrow to finalize stuff. This person is, is, is open to coming to the show, so I'm very excited. You guys are gonna be like, what, what? So it's been a lot of fun doing it. I mean, it's good to take chances sometimes. You never know who's watching. You never know where it's gonna lead you. Um, you have an idea, you have a spark of an idea. Sometimes it's good to li- light the spark. And see exactly what lights up. And that's James Lott Jr. And trust me, everything I've done was like I fell into it or whatever. I just kind of fell into it. Uh, like, or, I, or I did one thing that led to another thing that led to another thing. The ISAs, apparently Roger Newcomb and them liked my review of the ISA kind of. So we're, we're kind of, they reached out to me. So like, you never know. You just never know. And I'm, you know, closed mouths do not get fed. My mother says that all the time. And I say that all the time. I ask, if I feel like asking, or people can always say no. Um, I try things, you guys know this, I try things. Who knew in my late 40s, I'd have a music career, a book career, writing career, a television hosting career, a radio career, a voiceover career. I mean, everything, everything I'm doing right now was from the last like fucking five, six years. I started late. I started late. In my 40s, my late 40s, mid 40s, late 40s, I started late. And I'm having success in all those fields. And I'm like, I'm, I'm shocked. Trust me, I'm shocked. But it just goes to show people like stuff. And it doesn't matter what your age, I guess. It just, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to keep going and going. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. I'm not telling you who it is. But it's somebody important to the show that I was like, oh, okay. And they gave me their phone number. So I know I have the person's phone number. I was like, ooh, okay. They said, text me, and then we'll call you back and we'll talk. So I'm very excited. Very, very excited. I'm so glad I chose to do it. Oh, my God, you guys. It's the last two minutes. And that went by so fast. Lee went by so fast. That went by so fast. This show's going. This show's going fast. So tomorrow is my seventieth episode. Like what? I've done seventy of these. That's crazy talk. I came on to do a few here and there, and now I'm like I'm here almost every night. This is crazy. This is crazy. So tomorrow's my seventieth episode. Maybe we'll play trivia. I don't know. I'm gonna think, I'll think of something tomorrow night. I don't know. We'll think of something tomorrow night to, to do. I don't know. Let me let me a little different. Um, but I don't know yet. But thank you so much. A lot of help with James Lott Jr. A lot of help. Talk a lot with James. That's my other show. Talk a lot with James Lott Jr. See, I have too many shows, but a lot in them. Um, here every night. I'm going to try to post this on my YouTube channel, which is JLJ Media. I know, they don't, they only do, IG is like an hour. That's it. They don't give you no more than that. They said that's an hour. They, I don't know why they have a time limit, which is really weird. I know the 100th episode is around the corner. Like, literally, the 100th episode is around the corner. I know we just celebrated. We just celebrated my fiftieth episode. I know this is crazy. It's like this is all. This is, this is all too crazy. This is all too crazy. And I have more. So I have so many things going. I have so much things. So many things going on. All exciting stuff. But thanks everybody for coming on and joining me again tonight. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers. Like I am beard. Everybody out there to you fathers. Out there, it's not an easy job, but you know we're doing it. And um, it's a week, you guys. Time for a new week. Let's do it, kids. Let's do it. Bye.